So Matthew, I'm in this garden, which you started from scratch. It's your kitchen garden. It's got a lovely protective feel. Um, and you use this for your painting courses? Yes, I mean, it's, it's the sort of headquarters and it's in the middle of the garden. So everything radiates out of it. And when we got here and there wasn't a garden, the first thing that I knew is I wanted to have a kitchen garden that was productive and, and big, really. I'm not a great one for raised beds and little careful parterres. I like lots of stuff and lots of, of mm. production. And, yeah. and so we invented it. We had to invent the soil. There was no soil here. This was a building. This was a huge concrete pad. And that was a rubbish heap. So we've been piling muck on year mm. after year from the cows in the winter. And it's extraordinary. You put it, you know, a foot high it's and it's gone by yeah. the spring. And you just think, I don't know who's under there, but someone's doing a hell of a lot of wiggling around <laughs> under there. Because <laughs> so those worms are really pulling it down. And now I do do green manure as well, which does make a difference, I think. I think it is a good thing to do, not just leave it. And I'm not a sort of fanatical no digger, but I haven't dug it for a bit. Mm. And I dig it when you have to, but mm. uh, sometimes you have to because you get bindweed has got somewhere or you get something that you want to get rid of. But in general, I've been piling stuff on and now there is, I mean, it's not like a wonderful old kitchen garden with eight foot of black soil, but it is kind of beginning to get to what feels like sort of workable, healthy soil that things will be happy to grow in. Yeah, it certainly looks like they're really very happy. And this structure here is a bit like a sort of mound in the corner of an old wall garden. Yes, where, yes. With a really high viewpoint. I th it's a kind of natural thing to want to look at the thing, isn't it, from mm. above a bit. Mm. And uh, it's nice to have a place. It's very nice when the weather is hot, it's very cool. Occasionally it gets the old hammock strung up in it. But it's a nice place to hang out and look down and see what's going on. Watch other people working in it if you're someone else. Watch me work. <laughs> watch me working in it. But no, I, I, I think that I do like looking down. I'm not. I don't want to look from a huge height, but I think that you still feel involved that you can look into it. Yeah. No, it's lovely. It's a bird's eye view. Should we go and look in your greenhouse? Yeah. So this is all next year stuff. So so do you do it on perlite or what? Yeah, that uh, weird that clay stuff. pebble stuff. Lycra, lycra. That's yeah. right. So that's all poppies and antirrhinums and more poppies. There's lots of poppies, basically. So this is an ordinary light. You don't use the red and blue I have, lights. I've got them too, but at the moment I've just got these. Yeah. Um, and it, this is heated a bit when I mean, it's got that. It's just got that on. Yeah. So and it's quite a warm, you can feel a definite yeah. change in temperature, can't you? So you cut the, all your pearls back. Well, I'll show you in a minute, so yeah. if we go down the other end. This is hot-ish, but it's not the hottest place. But it's quite nice for keeping things stationary, but not frosty. Yeah. And that sort of helps a bit, I think. I'll show you, when we get down the other end. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a nice room, this, it's though, isn't lovely, it? It's isn't it? I suppose it's the boarding. It's also quite warm. It's got loads smell. of insulation, yeah. which doesn't make a huge difference. Um, I mean, it's got uh, stuff under there, and it's got kingspan in the walls between the boards and all that kind oh, of thing. Oh, really? Hello, um, please, would you and your lovely dogs? <laughs> I don't know how that's <laughs> ended up there. It means through the field to the trap and not round the grassy edge. Yes. Terrible. But I was reading the other day that, is it... 18 mil of polystyrene is equivalent in insulation to a 2 on 5 brick wall. That's extraordinary, it isn't is. it? Yeah. So I've made just some polystyrene. Well, that's sort of what's behind there. It does. It does. <laughs> oh, God. This is impressive, isn't it? They so said this is not heated at all and not insulated. And then. Come in here. No, this is just a whole load of steel. That you designed and got yeah. them to put in. Yeah, and well, my brother-in-law did it all. It's and it just a good way of doing it. It's quite nice, it? quite big. Yeah. And it would—I think it would have cost 100, 100, 200 grand if it was yeah. a great big Alatex greenhouse. Yeah. Come in here because it's really warm, and then I'll shut the door. Oh, sorry. And so this is upper peg for heat. Yeah. And if you poke your head in here, oh, wow. it's up another peg, is it? That's up another peg. So that is actually heated in there. 
so that moat yeah. was quite a construction. So that moat, there was no moat there. And you dug it out? Yeah. So at um, some plants at um, Hambledon, they dug out a moat. Yeah. And they put solar things in it, in the bottom, to There's keep a, the whole house. I know, I wish I'd done that, but I didn't. I'll well, tell you what was brilliant, was that. Was that on the Coya Roll? Yes. Yeah, that we use that. I mean, how Hamlet. marvellous is that? Yeah, it is amazing. Um, yeah. And it just, it's instant and lovely, yeah. and I've got to do, I've got to remodel this now to do the same, um, because so much nicer straight. And nice. I quite like that. Mm. You find that too messy, do you? Just too messy, I think. Mm. Only just. Here, have a, have we, we've got to do filming, we can't do yeah, let Here, let's go up here. And then it's, we get a view. Is all the stuff in the moat? The sides are all vertical. But they're also, but they're sort of, they're held together with all these thorns. But you get a bit of an idea of the sort of. So the moat goes in different scales, oh. goes the whole way around. Because this was all rubble, this and and slurry lagoons and stuff, we really had to completely make a thing. And I had this idea that the castle would originally have been this enclosure. All the archaeology shows that this is where the moat was. So we use old silt lines. And so we just said the gardening is all going to be within this four acre square. And it's going to be water all the way around. And then we gradually filled it in with orchard or garden or building or whatever. But the water does go the whole way around it. And that's quite a nice kind of... That's a very oh. bold step. Isn't is it? it? Because um, to to do that that to dig it out to a depth of two meters. Yes, but in some pla I mean, yes, in some places two a bit and a bit and some 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 less. But yes. And then you've lined it. No, it didn't, because didn't the water's so low here. So that is just. So the that's where the water table. is, and and we've, uh, that's uh, the the big bit is all moving water, yeah. And this is moving as yeah. well. That's coming down from another stream there. There's a stream where that sort of behind there. Yeah. And then the only bit that isn't moving is the bit behind here. Everywhere else is, is, um, is gradually moving. That's got springs and It gives field it drains. a very established feel, doesn't it? I like think the it, way you've used the pollarded willows. They're so useful, aren't they? They're lovely, I think. But they're also just the business of planting inside it. So all these, I mean, all these various trees have, have happened in the last 10 years, and they do people it really nicely. And you used to see... Particularly, I mean, there woods like over there. You used to see the village, which you now don't see. Um, you see the road in that direction, and so that you, the shrouding, and they go right. You can see all those pines and things in the distance. Um, yeah. There was no background, and then, so when you said, "What will it be like in ten years?" I hope that it will be a bit, bit more backgroundy. Mm. That's my, that's my yes. aim. So, and with medieval properties, they often well, it was a castle. It was fortified. It would have had protection. Yeah, I know so that they live in that protected area. So it does feel very fitting for your sort of property, do you think? Yes, I, I think I, I think that the sort of you know, I used to say recapturing the castle. You know, how how do you, without building a castle where there was one, how mm. do you get the feeling of a, of an enclosed, safe place? Because that's what feels nice. Yes. Um, and I mean, luckily we've got all the bits beyond it as well. But the, the but the, the centre is this chunk. And then you've designed, it's divided up basically with an orchard. So there's two bits of orchard, there's a sort yes. of extra bit of farm, and there's actually another bit of kitchen garden behind those little pine trees. Right. Um, another one, sort of little cabbages and leeks place. And then separate little paddocks around the edge. And then the more you, nearer the house you get, the more, as it were, intensive the gardening. And you've got the major courtyard as you come in to the house. And that's the about house. the same size as the garden behind it, so yeah. it sort of is too same size squares mm. um, that do it. But making that courtyard, I've always loved that business of a courtyard, a cloister, whatever it is. I think it's a, it's a nice feeling. Thing, yeah. isn't it? And nice. you have the views inside and the very and the view expansive views yes. outside. But I think it's definitely a nice feeling to feel that you are cuddled up by the buildings. Mm. And, um, and it, particularly in a place where you're not sort of snuggled up with trees. Yes. Yeah, no, it's very protective, very cosy. I, I, it's my favourite way of living, 
I think, in the courtyard setting. I think it's great. It's also very nice because I've got my daughter living in one of the other buildings on the other side and her boyfriend and baby. And so that also adds to the feeling of being in a... Yes, a, a, community. Yeah, in the yeah. campsite. And the circus. So when the circus comes to town, oh, which your daughter sheer runs. utter chaos here. Um, so the tent has moved around. It's been in the field where the cows were. It's been in the orchard. It's been in the middle of the yard last time, which was marvellous. It's been over there. And, and how many does it house? The tent? Oh, I think 220 in the morning and then 100 for dinner at night, 110 for dinner because it's a dinner show in the evening. And is it like the Cirque du Soleil type no, thing? No, it's smaller and more intimate and more homemade, but it's, you know, it's got the same performers. It's got brilliant performers and they all live here for however long it is. And the place feels very, I mean, it's, you know, it's relatively quiet except for guinea fowl at the moment. But then it becomes very noisy with band practice yeah. and, and people everywhere and... Lovely, whole. really. It is lovely. It's very nice, and also, of course, hundreds of people coming and going every day. Which you feed um, from the vegetables. Well, a bit, as, as, as discussed. <laughs> that's quite hard to do if you want that many, yeah. seven hundred lots or whatever it is. But um, but the people coming around, it's nice. I do love people coming around the garden. That mm. feels part of the thing, and I do all the open gardens and everything that one does, and we do courses and things. But I think it's you know a big continuous public thing is nice and having yeah. the circus means you've just got a lot of people wandering around and where do they get to so the circus moves to different places no the, so far this Lil's one has, has stayed here yeah and just done a short season here and then stopped but i think it may do a bit of touring this next year what most exciting that's nice and what part do you play i play the part of car park attendants very <laughs> very important and i sometimes play the part of person who keeps the dogs indoors during the show or the person who looks after the baby for a bit or I, I didn't have a, a yes, creative so part in that. Yes. I did paint the yeah. scenery. I was going to say, I bet there's lots no, of No, no, there, there are things, things to be done in that yeah. area. Can we have a look now yeah, at your, your studio? So, this is your workshop? This is my studio, really. It's where I, it's where I mean, it's a moment all laid out as a workshop for something different. But I work in here certainly all summer. I've got a slightly cosier place for the winter as well. But yes, it's plenty of room and room to lay out work and do one's drawings. And it means I've got quite a lot of the sort of archive of pottery that Emma has produced over the years, because otherwise you can't make sure the next thing goes with it. So this is all the vegetable stuff here, oh, which, as you can right. see, really does draw directly from the, from the garden outside. And they're all, so they're all things drawn from whatever is growing in there. Sometimes rather curious ones, like... I mean, a few, very few people have used a red cabbage as a, as a key, <laughs> key decorative element. That's actually Kitty, my daughter. Oh, who did that one? That's some that's little that's tiny very turnips. Similar style. So she oh yes, no, no, she's purposely copying your style. Yes, or that is her no, style. no, no. She does different things as well, but mm. she can do me the, as the well. Brussels sprout one is lovely, isn't <laughs> it? It was a Brussels sprout teapot. I thought it was the most ridiculous thing ever, but people quite liked it. Even so, it was quite nice. It was a very nice. Whoa. Whoa, that's a good bit to film. Yes, I quite like that, having um, black kale, and black mm. curly kale. And then down this end, there's a whole lot of flowers, look. And there's hundreds of the mugs all on mom's the back. Tea towels, yeah? These are a lot of my mum's tea towels, yes. Oh, Yunti, can you see all his mugs? Well, there's only a small proportion of them. At you weirdly. are joking. No. How many? So how many different I have no idea, but I mean, you know, hundreds and hundreds. I mean, 30 years worth of 50 would be... Fifteen hundred, I suppose. I did, yeah, probably yes. You know, there's a lot of different designs and specials for schools and charities and My houses. Sister. Your sister, <laughs> exactly all of hers. No, but, but you know, things we do a thousand or two thousand of yeah. for a, for a particular thing. Yeah, there's loads and loads. And then these are more standard ones that we do a whole um, a whole run of, and we'll run for a season or two. And, and these are all. Subjects from the garden as well. Oh, season or two, and then you drop them. Yes, they, you yeah, you would. Know, no, sometimes they come back, but on the whole, not. I think you just do the next. So that keeps the dynamic going. Yes, and it keeps. It I just, mean, ah. Otherwise, that sort of just gets a bit steady. Yeah. You've got to yeah, keep, yeah. keep it pumping moving. it out. And then I've done a bit of gravel gardening, like everybody else. This is a lovely area, isn't it? I love the way you relay these stone pavings here. It's so nice, isn't yeah. it? But also, all of. Uh, what everybody says is true. It's very, very little work to look after this. Gravel garden. Yes, yeah. it is. It is easy. It's a nice. Mm. It's a nice thing to do. Yeah. And some of the things are 
really nice in it. And, the, you know, they all sow themselves. And you suddenly one year it's all millions of abascums and then it's loads of abrinjum or whatever and loads of sages appear. And it's very dynamic, isn't it? I think it, it yes. Topic. And it changes, exactly, mm. yes. And... What are the Oh, it's a, really wedding, a it's, a, it's a wedding day, actually. Mm. But it, I just, I take everything off it except the flower stem. So all the new growth I cut off. And then you get these huge panicles of berries. If you don't, it looks like that. But if you take all the other growth, I didn't take that last bit off because I wanted to go over there now. But if you take all the other stuff off, they just get bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm. They are huge. Aren't they? I've never seen them so huge. And they stay on till when? Or do the birds come and eat them? No, birds come and eat them, but they stay on till Christmas, you know. 